Access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Buying Electronics Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn how to talk about electronics and what phrases to use at the store. Download it for free right now. Second, our printable visual flashcards. Want to speak more of the language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new printable visual flashcards, you'll know over 1,500 words. Just download and print them out. Third, 30 must-know legal vocabulary. Learn how to say court, law, illegal, and much more with this quick one-minute lesson. Fourth, how to talk about feeling excited. If you want to talk about your feelings, then this next lesson will teach you 13 words for excitement in just a few minutes. Fifth, must know Mother's Day vocabulary. Can you say Mother's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Sixth, tired of apps that just teach you random words? With our innovative language learning app, you learn through conversations and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download it for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 35% off with our Ready, Set, Speak sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. PortuguesePod101.com. Welcome to Whiteboard Lessons. Today we're going to talk about top 10 adjectives to describe people. Okay, so first let's start with the vocabulary. Novo. Novo. And nova. Nova. Means young. Novo, nova. Next we have velho, velho and velha, velha means old, velho, velha, those are opposites, novo, velho, nova and velha. Next is baixo, baixo and baixa, baixa means short. And we have alto, alto and alta. Alta means tall. Magro. Magro and magra. Magra means thin. Magro and magra. And gordo. Gordo and gorda. Gorda means fat. So we have two pairs here. Baixo alto, baixa alta. And magro, gordo, magra and gorda. Just be careful because if you say gordo or gorda to someone, it may sound a little bit as an offensive uh, adjective, okay? Next we have feio. Feio and feia. Feia means ugly and bonito. Bonito and bonita. Bonita, that means pretty. We also have fofo, fofo. And fofa, fofa, that means cute, and lindo, lindo, and linda, linda, that means beautiful. So basically these three can be the opposite of feio, so we have feio, and the opposite is bonito, fofo, ou lindo, and feia, and the opposite is bonita, fofa, ou linda. Last one is atraente. Atraente. That means good looking. Atraente. Okay, so now let's see the dialogue. Aquele é o meu irmão. Nossa, ele é alto. Aquele é o meu irmão. Nossa, ele é alto. That's my brother. Oh, he's tall. So you can see the adjective here. Alto. Since we are talking about the brother, irmão, that is a man, we say alto. Okay, the masculine form. 
Let's see some other examples. We also have Ele é magro. He's thin. Ele é magro. And Ela é bonita. Ela é bonita. See, we use a because we're talking about ela. She. She's pretty. Uh, if you wanted to, to switch, it would be ela é magra and ele é bonito. Okay? He's pretty or he's handsome. Okay, so finally, let's see the main pattern. That's ele é or ela é and then the adjective. His, she's, adjective. Okay? Ele é magro. Ela é bonita. Ele é novo. Ela é alta. Okay? Just make sure to use the correct adjective with the correct person. You can also use the name of the person if you want here. For example, Paulo é alto. Maria é bonita. Okay? So, as I said before, in Brazil, if you say gordo or gorda, it may sound too direct and may offend the other person. So, uh, an alternative that you can use is gordinho or gordinha, which is the diminutive form. Gordinho and gordinha. That's the famous inho and inha in Portuguese that makes a word diminutive. So, gordinho literally means little fat, but we translate it as chubby, okay? Do you remember the masculine form of the word tall? Alto. Alto. And do you remember how to say he? Ele. Ele. Do you remember how to say he's tall? Ele é alto. Ele é alto. And how to say oh? Nossa. Nossa. Do you remember how to say, oh, he's tall? Nossa, ele é alto. Nossa, ele é alto. Do you remember the feminine word for tall? Alta. Alta. Do you remember the masculine form of the word short? Baixo, baixo, and the feminine form of the word short. Baixa, baixa. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for old? Velho, velho. And the feminine form of the word for old? Velha, velha. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for young? Novo, novo. And the feminine form of the word for young? Nova, nova. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for thin? Magro, magro. And the feminine form of the word for thin? Magra, magra. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for fat? Gordo, gordo. And the feminine form of the word for fat? Gorda, gorda. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for ugly? 
feio, feio. And the feminine form of the word for ugly, feia, feia. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for pretty? Bonito, bonito. And the feminine form of the word for pretty? Bonita, bonita. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for cute? Fofo. Fofo. And the feminine form of the word for cute? Fofa. Fofa. Do you remember the masculine form of the word for beautiful? Lindo. Lindo. And the feminine form of the word for beautiful? Linda. Linda. Do you remember how to say good looking? Atraente. Atraente. Okay, everyone. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next lesson. Ciao! Hi everybody, my name is Paloma. Oi gente, meu nome é Paloma. Welcome to Whiteboard Lessons by PortuguesePod101.com Today we're going to talk about basic comparisons in Portuguese. First, let's see the sentence pattern. So the pattern we have today is now, in this case we're going to talk about places and mais, adjective, que, another noun. Now is more adjective than another noun. For example, we have Curitiba, which is a city in Brazil, é mais frio que São Paulo. Curitiba é mais frio que São Paulo. Curitiba é mais frio que São Paulo. Curitiba is colder than São Paulo. Campo Grande é mais calmo que o Rio de Janeiro. Campo Grande, another city, é mais calmo que o Rio de Janeiro. Campo Grande é mais calmo que o Rio de Janeiro. Campo Grande is calmer than Rio de Janeiro. So, as you can see, we have the cities here, and the only exception is Rio de Janeiro that we need to add O. So, most cities and states in Portuguese don't have gender, but only Rio de Janeiro we say O, O Rio de Janeiro, okay? Here you can see the main pattern, mais frio que, which means colder than. So we have mais, and then the adjective frio, mais calmo que, more calm than, okay? That's the literal translation. Curitiba é mais frio que São Paulo, and Campo Grande é mais calmo que o Rio de Janeiro. Ok, so now let's see the main dialogue. Serra da Saudade é pequeno? Bom, Serra da Saudade é menor que São Paulo. Serra da Saudade é pequeno? Bom, Serra da Saudade é menor que São Paulo. So, Serra da Saudade is a city in Brazil as well. The literal translation would be Serra, which means hell of saudade. Saudade means it's the longing feeling. You know, when you meet someone, that's that feeling, saudade. Serra da saudade é pequeno. Bom, Serra da saudade é menor que São Paulo. E Serra da saudade small. Well, Serra da saudade is smaller than São Paulo. So, as you can see here, we have pequeno 
But we don't have mais pequeno. We have menor. Why is that? It's because a few adjectives in Portuguese have another form, just like we have small and smaller in English. In this case, we have pequeno and menor. You cannot say mais pequeno, okay? Let's see a few more vocabulary you can use here. Frio. Frio, which means cold. Quente. Quente means hot. Calmo. Calmo is calm. And the opposite is agitado. Agitado. Busy. Pequeno. Pequeno. Small. And grande. Grande which is big. Okay, so frio, you're going to say mais frio. Quente, you're going to say mais quente. Calmo, also mais calmo. Agitado, mais agitado. And then we have these two exceptions at the end. Pequeno, which becomes menor. Menor. And we have grande, which becomes maior. Maior. So, if we change the sentence and replace São Paulo with Serra da Saudade, we're going to switch these two, right? So, it would be São Paulo é grande? Bom, São Paulo é maior que Serra da Saudade. Okay, now the culture point. The more you go to the north, the hotter it is in Brazil. The Amazon region is very hot and very humid. And the southern part of Brazil is where you find the coldest winters, which is not that cold if you compare to America or other countries. Curitiba is in the southern part of Brazil and it has colder winters than Sao Paulo, which is a little bit above. Sao Paulo is the biggest city in population in Brazil. It's located in the southeastern region of Brazil. Campo Grande is almost in the middle of the South American continent. It is the capital of Mato Grosso do Sul. Then we talked about Rio de Janeiro. That's one of the most famous cities of Brazil. It's located on the coast, so it has many beaches, and it's most famous for its carnival, which is the biggest of the world. O maior, as we talked in this lesson. And lastly, we talked about Serra da Saudade. It is located in Minas Gerais state. It is the smallest city of Brazil in population. Do you remember how to say smaller? Menor. Menor. And how to say then? Que. Que. Do you remember how to say smaller than? Menor que. Menor que. Do you remember how to say, well, Serra da Saudade is smaller than São Paulo? Bom, Serra da Saudade é menor que São Paulo. Bom, Serra da Saudade é menor que São Paulo. Do you remember how to say cold? Frio. Frio. And how to say hot? Quente. Quente. Do you remember how to say calm? Calmo. Calmo. And how to say busy? Agitado. Agitado. Do you remember how to say small? Pequeno. Pequeno. And do you remember how to say big? Grande. Grande. 
Do you remember how to say more? Mais. Mais. And how to say bigger? Maior. Maior. Okay, that's it for today for our whiteboard lesson. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions and see you next time. Ciao, ciao. Hi everybody, my name is Paloma. Welcome to Whiteboard Lessons. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about using greetings and party expressions in Portuguese. So please pay attention because this is very important in Brazil. Let's first start with the vocabulary. First we have the greetings. Oi, oi, oi means hi. Olá, olá, olá means hello. Bom dia, bom dia, bom dia, good morning. Boa tarde, boa tarde, boa tarde, good afternoon. Boa noite, boa noite, boa noite means Good evening or good night. We use the same word. In Brazil, we use oi much more often than olá. But you can use both if you want. And now let's see the parting expressions. Até mais. Até mais. Até mais. See you later. Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. See you soon. Tchau means bye. You can also say tchau tchau. Bye bye. Same as in English. You can see that we have até and até here. It means until. Literally. Até. So until literally means until more or see you later. And até logo means until soon. See you soon. Até logo. Okay, now let's move on to the dialogue. Bom dia. Bom dia. Bom dia. Good morning. Bom dia. Good morning. So when someone greets you with one of those, you can use the same one to answer. Bom dia. Bom dia. Boa tarde, boa tarde, boa noite, boa noite. And this is the dialogue when parting. Tchau, até mais. Boa noite, tchau. Tchau, até mais. Bye, see you later. Boa noite, tchau. Good night, bye. So you can also mix both. For example, tchau, até mais. Tchau, até mais. Or até mais, tchau. And you can also use boa noite or boa tarde, tchau. As we talked before, boa noite means good evening or good night. It could be both in this case. Okay, so when should we use bom dia, boa tarde or boa noite? Bom dia is used in the morning, so from the time you wake up until noon. Afternoon, after lunch, we use boa tarde. So from noon until sunset, we say boa tarde. And after sunset, when it's dark, we use boa noite until you go to sleep. Do you remember how to say good morning? Bom dia. Bom dia. And how to say hi? Oi. Oi. Do you remember how to say hello? Hola. Hola. 
and how to say good night or good evening. Boa noite. Boa noite. Do you remember how to say good afternoon? Boa tarde. Boa tarde. And how to say bye? Tchau. Tchau. Do you remember how to say see you later? Até mais. Até mais. And how to say see you soon? Até logo. Até logo. Today, we talked about greetings and party expressions. Which one was the hardest for you? Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again here at portuguesepod101.com. Até mais. Tchau, tchau. How are your Portuguese listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Um homem e uma mulher estão conversando. Que horas a entrevista vai começar? Como está a procura de emprego? Boa! Eu até tenho uma entrevista amanhã. Ah, sério? Você quer tomar um café depois da entrevista? Sim, claro. Mas a entrevista começa às sete, então vai ser bem tarde. E que tal antes da entrevista? Tudo bem. Vamos nos encontrar às quatro horas, então. Que horas a entrevista vai começar? Um homem e uma mulher estão conversando. Que horas a entrevista vai começar? Como está a procura de emprego? Boa! Eu até tenho uma entrevista amanhã. Ah, sério? Você quer tomar um café depois da entrevista? Sim, claro. Mas a entrevista começa às sete, então vai ser bem tarde. E que tal antes da entrevista? Tudo bem. Vamos nos encontrar às quatro horas, então. How are your Portuguese listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A mulher está conversando com um membro da equipe da biblioteca. O que a mulher vai fazer? Com licença, eu estou procurando um dicionário médico. Sim, um dicionário médico? Um momento, por favor. Dicionários médicos estão no quarto andar. Quarto andar? Você pode me mostrar o caminho? Sim, claro, mas você não pode levar os livros daquele andar. Ah, é? É, mas nós temos uma máquina de xerox no terceiro andar. Então, você pode tirar cópia se você precisar. Cópia? Eu tenho um monte de coisas que eu quero ver, então provavelmente vai demorar muito. Ah, sim. Você tem razão. Bom, tem mais uma biblioteca aqui perto. Você pode tentar perguntar lá. Tem? Então, eu vou lá primeiro. Se eles não tiverem, eu vou tentar em uma livraria. O que a mulher vai fazer? A mulher está conversando com um membro da equipe da biblioteca. O que a mulher vai fazer? Com licença, eu estou procurando um dicionário médico. Sim, um dicionário médico? Um momento, por favor. Dicionários médicos estão no quarto andar. Quarto andar? 
Você pode me mostrar o caminho? Sim, claro. Mas você não pode levar os livros daquele andar. Ah, é? É. Mas nós temos uma máquina de xerox no terceiro andar. Então você pode tirar cópia se você precisar. Cópia? Eu tenho um monte de coisas que eu quero ver. Então provavelmente vai demorar muito. Ah, sim. Você tem razão. Bom. Tem mais uma biblioteca aqui perto. Você pode tentar perguntar lá. Tem? Então eu vou lá primeiro. Se eles não tiverem, eu vou tentar em uma livraria. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way. All the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how tipping points will bring you closer to your language goals. If you've been learning a language for some time, you know that real progress takes time, that you won't see instant results in the next five minutes. And this can be discouraging for many learners. But don't worry, there are secret signs of success that you're on the right track and that you're going to make it. And they're called tipping points. You may not notice them immediately, but you'll always notice them in hindsight. So today you'll discover what tipping points are, how to know that you're on the right track with your language learning, how to reach tipping points, and much more. But first, If you're looking for new free language resources and downloads, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Buying Electronics Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn how to talk about electronics and what phrases to use at the store. Download it for free right now. Second, our printable visual flashcards. Want to speak more of the language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new principal visual flashcards, you'll know over 1,500 words. Just download and print them out. Third, 30 must-know legal vocabulary. Learn how to say court, law, illegal, and much more with this quick one-minute lesson. Fourth, how to talk about feeling excited. If you want to talk about your feelings, then this next lesson will teach you 13 words for excitement in just a few minutes. And fifth, must know Mother's Day vocabulary. Can you say Mother's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How tipping points will bring you closer to your language goals. Part one, why tipping points are crucial for confidence in language learning. So. What's a tipping point? A tipping point is a point that you reach, or a small victory, and it gives you confidence that you're going to make it. It's a sign that you're on the right track. Here's a non-language example. Imagine a gym on a Friday night, and not at 5 p.m., I mean at 10 p.m. What does it look like to you? It probably looks empty to me, like a library on a Friday night. But if you've ever been to a gym on a Friday night, there's a very interesting group of people. The most fit people you'll ever see are there. Why is this a big deal? Well, of all the things you could be doing on a Friday night, if you naturally decide to work on your fitness or any goal that you have, then that's a good sign. So what about language learning? It works the same way with languages. If you find yourself learning and practicing a language on a Friday night instead of watching Netflix, if you're taking language lessons with our innovative language learning app instead of playing a game on your smartphone, if you're watching our video lessons instead of watching random YouTube videos, then you've reached a tipping point. These are all examples of tipping points. It's when you, your actions, and your free time shift away from usual routines like watching TV towards the goals you really want, like mastering a language. That's a tipping point, and it's crucial for your confidence and overall language learning. It's evidence that you're on the right track and you're going to make it. And you might wonder, how is it evidence if I don't see any progress just yet? It does take a bit of time to make progress with language, but the answer is simple. Language learning is a lot like anything else you do in life. It comes down to where you put in your time. It's like Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule. You need time. Languages don't need 10,000 hours per se, but the principle is the same. 
If someone spends an hour every day on language and has done that for the past two years, that's a lot of time. So you can guarantee that this person is speaking the language with no problems, simply because of the time they put in. So what about you? How can you know if you're on the right track in reaching these tipping points? Let's get into the second part. Part two, how you can tell when you're reaching a tipping point. Picture it like this. You're learning a language in your free time. You have a small goal set. Now, within your daily routines, you start making certain choices. Between watching TV and mastering a language, you start putting more time into language. Exactly. Last week, you started with 10 minutes of learning and 50 minutes of TV. Then it grows. You spend 20 minutes on language, 40 on TV. And then 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And soon it overtakes your typical routines. That's exactly how tipping points happen. So take a look at how much time you spend on a language and take a look at your recent choices of activities. If you're learning a language with your smartphone instead of playing a mobile game, if you're spending more time watching language videos instead of regular YouTube videos, and if you're learning on a Friday night as a personal choice, that's how you know you've reached a tipping point. Tipping points are something you won't notice immediately, but you will realize in hindsight. But the point is, when you find yourself choosing language over something else, that's a sign that you're going to make it. And if you wanna actively reach these tipping points, then it's just a matter of putting in more time. Again, if you started with 10 minutes a day last week, bring yourself up to 11 or 12 minutes a day this week. Simply adjust your routine and add more time. For example, we often recommend you to set small, measurable goals with a deadline every month. So if you are, aim a little higher with your next goal add an extra few minutes to your routines. Now, back to you. Now that you learned about tipping points, do you think you've reached any? Leave us a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about your first steps to learning a language, the Fundamentals Welcome Pack. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. You want to learn the language, but it's hard to find effective lessons that are made by real teachers and that actually build on top of each other, where you're learning new things and reviewing what you've already learned. Well, that's exactly how our audio and video lessons inside our learning program work. How to learn language fast with audio and video lessons. Four tricks inside. In this guide, you'll discover one, how to learn practical conversations in just minutes. Two, four tips that'll help you absorb the language and master lessons fast. And three, how to get our brand new lessons for free. But first, if you don't yet have access to our learning program, click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. First, so what makes these language lessons so effective? Each lesson is around three to 15 minutes in length, making it super easy to breeze through and absorb the language. You're not reading walls of text, but listening to actual native speakers teach you a language. Just press play to start. First, you hear a practical conversation. Then you hear it again slowly with translations. Then our teachers explain the vocabulary, grammar points, and cultural nuances. Finally, you hear the conversation one last time. And at this point, you understand a lot more than you did the first time you heard the lesson, which is exciting for a language learner, especially when you didn't understand anything before. And you can even start speaking if you repeat along. All of this takes just a few minutes. Then mark the lesson as complete and move on to the next lesson in our learning pathway, where you'll learn even more and get to review some of the words and grammar points from prior lessons. Two, there are a few special tips and tricks you can do to master the lessons even faster. You can read along with our free lesson transcript so that you can pick apart every word that you hear. You can immerse yourself with the premium dialogue track that gives you just the conversation with no translations. If you have a question, you can leave a comment on the lessons and our teachers will respond. And you can replay and review the lesson as much as you want so you can learn at your own pace. So how do you get access to the lessons? You get the lessons the moment you sign up for a free lifetime account and set your level. 
based on your level, you'll get a learning pathway of lessons that's right for you. Just start there with lesson one. You can also access your next lesson on the dashboard. And you can learn on the go. For example, on a walk, on your way to work, or while waiting in line at the store with our free app. And as an extra bonus, you get our newest lessons for free. We release three to four new lessons a week, so you get new lessons every week nonstop. Find them inside the Lessons drop-down menu in Newest Lessons or inside the menu on the app. But first, if you don't yet have access to our learning program, click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Do you feel like you don't speak enough of your target language? that you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Learning a language is tough because it's hard to remember every single thing that you learn. But what if you had a cheat sheet with the must-know words, phrases, and grammar rules, where you can glance through and review everything in a minute or two? If you do that enough times, then the language will become natural. How to learn a language two times faster with PDF cheat sheets. And in this guide, you'll discover, one, how to learn and retain hundreds of words and phrases with our cheat sheets, two, how to unlock over 30 cheat sheets, and much more. But first, if you don't yet have access to our learning program, the lessons and special cheat sheets like this, click the link down in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. First, what are these cheat sheets? With our learning program, you'll learn the language with bite-sized audio and video courses. And as a bonus, you get PDF cheat sheets to help you review the language. These cheat sheets cover must-know topics like weather, family, talking about hobbies, and much more. There are over 30 cheat sheets inside. Inside each cheat sheet, you get the words, phrases, and helpful sentence patterns related to the topic that you can quickly review whenever you have a minute or two. Now, how can you learn faster with these cheat sheets? Just download a cheat sheet, print it, keep it nearby, and glance through as much as possible. Eventually, you'll know all of the words and phrases in and out, simply because you've seen the words enough times. It's all about exposure to the language. The more you're exposed to the language, the better you'll remember it. And you can always save the PDFs to your device, but having physical cheat sheets makes it easy to pick one up and glance through. Otherwise, they'll sit somewhere on your phone or computer, along with the many other language learning apps you haven't been using. How can you get access to our PDF cheat sheets? Just click the link in the description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get our learning program and these bonus cheat sheets. Once you've signed up, come back to the special PDF lessons page by clicking the link in the description. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the word bank, your personal vocabulary collection, where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.